Welcome, people of Planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and today we're going to talk about how to identify Levi's vintage bell bottoms. Let's get into it. So, the 60s are known for protest anthems, Woodstock, the Summer of Love, and bell bottoms. Though bell bottoms certainly weren't invented in the 1960s, they have hundreds of years of history prior to that. They were originally used as uh, pants for Navy sailors. Uh, so they had a long history prior to the 60s. But in the 1960s, military garb was more and more popular as sort of uh, popular fashion. So there seems to be at least a little bit of a connection between the two. Now, Levi's actually resisted the bell bottom at first. Uh, the story goes that shop owner Peggy Caserta, who was also a friend of Janis Joplin and the Grateful Dead, had seen all these young hippie uh, girls wearing these flared out 501s. And so she approached Levi's, who she had been distributing for for a few years, and said, hey, help me make these jeans. And they said, nah. But to her surprise, an old time uh, Levi's employee uh, who claims to have worked for uh, Levi Strauss himself, uh, approached her and said, hey, I'll bankroll it, let's do it. And they made the bell-bottom jean. In fact, I believe this is the jean that the Levi's Vintage Clothing uh, 1966 bell-bottom was really modeled after. Finally, in 1969, Levi's rolled out their 646 classic Levi's bell-bottom, and it was wildly popular for over a decade. While Levi's may have started with the 646 bell bottom, they quickly added another design to their lineup, and that was the 684 Big Bell. While the 646 was slim through the thigh and knee and expanded around the shin, uh, the Big Bell was just a bit wider in every characteristic. The widest opening probably for any Levi's jean ever. Probably not rivaled until the 90s when the baggy silver tab jeans came on the scene. Levi's would also add bell bottoms to a bunch of other varieties and lines like Levi's for gals and moving on. They would also make the 646 and the 684 and a couple other different uh, bell bottom varieties in different materials like corduroy or stay pressed, which was their polyester. Uh, or uh, non-denim cotton as well. Levi's denim bell bottoms were primarily released through the orange tab line, though you can find bell bottoms in many other colored tabs, specifically like white tabs and black tabs. Generally, the 646 and 684 maintain some of the foundational designs of traditional Levi's. They were dark wash, they had the arcuate on the back pocket, they had the tab on the back pocket, but most of them are missing back patches. This was not seen as sort of a fashionable thing at the time, so they didn't see a need for it. Also, they don't have rivets. In fact, uh, they traded the rivets for lightweight bar tacks. This was more conducive to a fashion uh, jean rather than a workwear jean or some jean that you would need to last for a very long time. Levi's would also get rid of the watch pocket common to previous Levi's jeans in favor of more rounded, sleek front pockets. Later bell bottoms from lines like Moving On and Levi's for Gals would expand on this design and go in a lot of different diverse ways, adding different pocket designs, different arcuate designs and trims, and all kinds of different patterns in between. Now, like I said before, Levi's would release lots of other different bell bottoms under different lot numbers. But there seems to be a common thread amongst all of these lot numbers for different bell bottom jeans, uh, specifically regarding the six in the series. So you might find a pair like this one right here. This is a 699. The common thread is the six, uh, not the 99. The 99 likely denotes that these are a different line. They have a white tab. They are non-denim cotton. So they have a different lot number. They would also use different lot numbers to denote uh, different lines like student lines. Like the student line used seven instead of six, but it used the other two digits like 746 or 784. 
Uh, this was to denote a student size rather than adult size. You can typically use this information to help you determine some of the odd ball bell bottoms you might find out there, because uh, there were lots of different varieties. Um, but if it has six in the first digit, uh, so it's a 600 series lot number, uh, typically that's going to be a bell bottom. And if it has four six or eight four, typically that will be a bell bottom as well. Now also in 1969, Levi's released the 517 bootcut jeans, which also flared down towards the shin, though not nearly as much. And a lot of times these two are confused uh, with one another. Generally speaking, you can sort this out just by looking at the inside care tag and finding the lot number and noticing whether or not it says 646 or 517. Uh, but if that tag is not present, you should just reference the 646 like online or something and check your 517 and see which one has the bigger flare because the 646 will almost always have the bigger flare than the 517. So once you've compared the two, you can generally discern between the two. Now, it's widely known that Levi's changed the way that the Levi's was spelled on the pocket tab of their jeans. They went from using a capital E to using a lowercase e. The capital E we call Big E and the lowercase e we call Little E. It's fairly simple. And since bell bottoms were released in 1969, there are a few years that the bell bottoms will have capital E's instead of lowercase e's. But I will have you note that this transition didn't happen all at once. It didn't happen right at 1971 and no other gene was ever produced that had a big E. That's just unfortunately not correct. In fact, you can find big E genes from every single color of tab after 1971. While it is a decreasing rate, it's still possible. In fact, most of these exceptions are going to happen within the orange tab line, the white tab line, black tabs, uh, and some others are very common in those tabs. Less common in the red tabs, which is a good thing and very helpful, but very common in the other colors. And in fact, you can actually find big E's all the way into like 1976, maybe even a little bit later. So with that in mind, there are a couple of elements we can use to help sort this out. Firstly, in 1971, federal regulation required clothing makers to include wash instructions with their garment. Now, Levi's had already started including this information on some of their garments in the form of a stamp, uh, but in 1971, it did become a law and it applied it to all of their jeans. So some of the earliest Levi's bell bottoms will have a stamp with wash instructions and a bunch of other helpful information. Later on, they would add a tag that was sewn in that had the same information, but we can use both to determine and be more precise about the production date of our gene. This stamping method was used until about 1973 or 74 or so as it was transitioned out. In fact, you can find uh, some uh, Levi's jeans with a stamp and a tag sewn in as well with sort of duplicate information. So since we can use this information on this stamp or tag, let's talk about how we can actually use it. Sometimes the stamp or tag has been faded out and you can no longer read the information on it. But if you can read the information on it, there is some really helpful information that we can derive from it and helping us determine the age of our pair of jeans. First is the factory code, and the second is the date code. So let's go ahead and work on the factory code first. So the Levi's factory code can be found on the back of the closure button of your pair of Levi's. This number was either a one or two digit number, or it was a letter. And after 1981 or so, Levi's moved to a standard three digit code. So if your Levi's have a three digit code, it's likely they were produced after 1981. But if they have a one or two digit or a single letter uh, factory code, they were produced before 1980 or 1981 or so. In this case, this example right here, we actually have a 14 on the back of the button. And we can actually use that, in, that number and find that number on the stamp that we have here. You can see right here, right below the wash instructions, we have the number 14. So now we know that the 14 on the stamp is in fact the factory code though I don't exactly know which factory this is. It is a factory in America that I do know, um, but what it does do is help me orient myself to the next piece of information we're going to be looking for, and that is the date code. 
The Levi's date code at this point in Levi's history was either a two digit or three digit number. Uh, this one, two or three digit number would last until the early 90s when it was moved to a four digit number. There are a few occasions uh, in the 70s uh, where the digit is four digits, but it's going to largely be uh, pretty easy to discern once you know how to look for it. But now looking back at our stamp, we're looking for a two or three digit number. And one other thing that will help us with this uh, two or three digit number is that it's generally found near or approximately uh, by the factory code. So we can look just to the left of the 14 that we had originally found and we can see another number. And this is 052, which would give us a date of May 1972. Because the way you read this digit number is the first two digits or the first single digit. Sometimes the zero is left out, not in this case, but sometimes it is, which would give you a two digit. Uh, but we can use that first two digits to give us our month. And the last digit in the date code is the last digit of the year. So in this case, it's 1972. So how else can we confirm that this number is probably correct? And that's because the stamp system was used until about 1974 or so. This would give us 1972 well within the range of the production era that we were talking about. So we can be confident that this is the date code and that these jeans or this pair of pants was produced in May of 1972. And you'll also notice that there are other numbers on this stamp as well. Uh, one is the 699, then there is the 3287. Well, those two numbers are also important. The 699 is the lot number, and the four digits that follow are the material code or the like color code of the print that's on the jeans. I'm not entirely sure what those other numbers to the left are, but we can be confident that that three digit followed by the four digit number is the lot number and material code. This is an element of Levi's care tags that you will find uh, throughout Levi's history. Sometimes the 699 will have two other digits prior to it, which is a bit more common in the 80s, uh, but for the most part, you'll always be able to find that three digit number uh, that looks like uh, the lot number and the four digit numbers that follow it being the material codes. Here you can see another example of the lot number and the material code with the lot number 648, which are the big bells, followed by the material code 0217, which was actually the standard material code for uh, pre-shrunk or Sanfordized denim. I also notice there's a 104 down there on the bottom. That four actually matches up with the back of the button of this pair of jeans, and that means that the zero and the one are our date codes, which give us 1980. Uh, January 1980 to be specific. Now you can check the eye above for our vintage Levi's guide that has a number of other videos on how to read Levi's care tags uh, because there are a couple other varieties and things you should know. So another element that we can use to help determine the age of our Levi's bell bottoms is the zipper. Uh, that's because in 1980, Levi's transitioned from using primarily Scoville, uh, Talon 42, and a few other generic zippers to using their own Levi's branded zipper. So if your zipper has Levi's branding on it, it's probably been produced after 1980. And if it has a Talon 42 or some other generic one, it's quite possible and most likely that it's produced before 1980. So this is a good little line in the sand that can help you determine uh, the age of your pair of jeans if some of these other factors like the tag or stamp are no longer visible. So how do you know whether or not your Levi's are for men or women? Well, early on in the production of bell bottoms, it wasn't particularly noted whether or not it was a uh, men's or women's. That was sort of a thing that happened in the 80s, specifically for Levi's. So generally speaking, these bell bottoms were used sort of interchangeably. There are some lines like Levi's for gals that specifically made jeans and pants for women, but as far as the standard 646s and the standard 684s, generally speaking, even on the secondary market today, they are sort of interchangeable. There's not a lot of distinction, uh, if any at all, between uh, a pair of 646s for men or for women. Now, while Levi's bell bottoms were officially born in 1969, had their glory days in the 70s, petered out through the 80s, popped up here and there in the 90s and 2000s, 
Uh, it appears that maybe the dominance that we've seen from the skinny jean in the last 20 years, which has really killed the flare, may be ending, and a flare and bell bottoms may be coming back. So get ahead of the fad and go find yourself some beautiful vintage Levi's flares and bell bottoms and be the cool kid on the block. So I hope this little guide was helpful for you, whether you are buying, selling, uh, collecting, wearing, whatever it is, I hope this information was beneficial to you. So thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.